Hello, my name is Donald Kramer and I am the statistician for the Wisconsin Annual Conference. I am a lay member of the Milwaukee Central United Methodist Church. I have been volunteering as the conference statistician for about 10 years now. Uh, before we start looking at the data, I wanna talk a little bit about the statistics process. Each year, every church across the denomination, they submit their data to a central database um, called Ezra. Every church is required by discipline to do that by January 31st. Um, the past two years, we've been extending that deadline to February 28th, just um, because everyone sort of seems to need a little bit extra time uh, during this pandemic. Um, then what happens is I look over the data, our administrators, we um, uh, look through some errors, we follow up on questions, and then eventually uh, we submit our data to the general conference by April 30th. Then that data is used uh, to look at trends, to um, calculate apportionments, to think about um, how resources are allocated. Um, the data gets used uh, throughout the conference and the whole general conference. I pulled this data from UMC data uh, just to show the north central jurisdiction. All of the numbers on this screen uh, came from local churches submitting their data, which then got um, pushed upward to the general conference level. Uh, these are the 10 conferences within the North Central jurisdiction. If you look towards the bottom of the page, you can see Wisconsin down there. Um, it's one of the smaller conferences in our jurisdiction with um, only 456 churches and 52,000 members. That's as of 2020. Uh, the general um, the jurisdiction hasn't put together their data from all of the conferences yet from 2021. This is especially important also as we're thinking about uh, how the denomination um, is restructuring, how it's thinking about leadership, how it's thinking about its direction in these next couple of years to really see our place and how we fit in with um, other conferences and other jurisdictions. In 2021, I want to little talk about um, specifically how that data looks, um, how it came in. Uh, this year we had about 446 local churches. Um, I'm saying it's about there because uh, with new church starts and with uh, churches closing um, throughout the year, um, 446 isn't exactly um, always the correct number throughout the entire year. But we're going to use that when we talk about our data um, in this presentation. More than 80% of the local churches submitted their data prior to the deadline, which is a huge help. It's a lot less um, follow-up that I have to go through and saves me for um, other work. Uh, eventually, only 18 churches um, were missing some of their data. Uh, so to have 96% uh, participa participation uh, was really great for this year's um, data submission. Uh, in total, we had about 14,000 warnings. A warnings generated every time a church um, changes its data uh, significantly from the previous year. Um, usually uh, it, it all makes sense and the churches submit um, an explanation for that warning, but um, there are a lot of warnings to go through and that's part of the, the process to clean the data before we submit it to general conference. Um, looking at our data, uh, the first number most people wanna see is membership and uh, you can see our trends um, throughout the years are decreasing. And this is um, 2021 was no uh, difference. I think we're all experiencing that at the local church level. Uh, 2021 was the year that uh, we um, dropped below 50,000. This next slide talks about weekly worship participation. Um, first line, average weekly worship. Um, I think with the drop in 2020, I think I expected some, um, some bounce back to pre-pandemic levels. I was surprised to see that uh, there was the decrease in um, worship numbers. Online worship, we expected it to go down as people start meeting in person again. Um, Sunday school numbers uh, didn't seem to bounce back. They just continued to decline in 2021. Uh, vacation Bible school participants, that increased. But I don't know if that's necessarily um, uh, program by program or just um, many programs didn't meet in 2020 and then returned in 2021 which made uh, numbers increase from 2020 to 2021. Uh, this next slide, um, this one is the one that concerns me the most. Um, uh, Christian formation group participants, uh, each age group had declined. Um, 
if we are worried about membership going down, definitely if Christian formation groups are declining, then um, I think that's, uh, we're gonna expect to see membership uh, following uh, these trends also. Uh, some other participation uh, values, United Methodist Men and United Women in Faith uh, both report their activity based on projects and the expenses of those projects. Uh, that's the first two lines um, calculated in thousands of dollars. The next two lines are small groups, uh, ongoing groups and short term um, groups that meet uh, both had decline, uh, declining values in 2021. And finally, the last two measuring United Methodist volunteers and mission, um, both saw increases after the decline during the 2020 um, uh, pandemic uh, shutdowns. Our next slide is church assets. These are um, assets held by the local churches. This does not include anything held by the conference, such as um, camps or individual churches that the conference owns. Um, you can see the values of the uh, property keeps increasing. Uh, we don't really see a decrease in properties um, that matches the decrease in the number of members that are taking care of those properties. That last line is um, other debt, and that's included um, really because these last two years with PPP loans, um, that other debt, um, a big decrease in that is in 2020, the PPP loans were issued, and then in 2021, they were forgiven. Um, so that's what that big decrease um, between those two years are on that line. This next slide talks about personnel at the local church level and what um, churches are reporting that they're paying them. Uh, any changes on this slide? I'm not necessarily attributing that to um, uh, any decrease, I'm not really attributing that to individuals actually getting paid less, but there being fewer employees at the local church level, which is how I'm um, attributing these uh, decreases. I also want to remind you, these are the total expenses from the church's point of view. Uh, it includes salary plus housing added together. And then looking at income and how income has changed between 2020 and 2021. Um, if you look uh, the second to bottom line, the actual totals in millions of dollars hasn't changed by much. But what seems to have happened is some of the categories have switched values. Um, and it looks like pledges went down, but non pledged giving went up. So I wonder if that's just attributed to um, a fewer pledge drives happening uh, for 2021. Finally, that last line non UMC grants, I included that because that's sort of the flip side of the PPP loans, right? Uh, when, um, when the PPP loan was forgiven, um, churches entered that as a grant that was given to them. And you can see we had quite uh, some large PPP grants uh, given in 2020 and 2021, right? So these past few slides have really been comparing um, 2020 to 2021. These next few slides, I'm trying to capture some of the characteristics of our conference. Uh, the first one here I want to talk about is uh, distribution based on district. That pie chart on the left uh, shows the number of churches, the 446 churches, how they're distributed amongst the five districts. You can see they're uh, pretty, pretty close to 20% of our um, churches are in each district. And then uh, the pie chart on the right is the distribution of our membership, the 49,800 members, how they're distributed amongst our uh, five districts. I don't think it's very surprising to see that more than half of our members are in the two southern um, districts where uh, population in the state is more concentrated. This next slide, what I did is I took the compensation paid by the local churches and I broke it up. Um, I tried to think of it from the point of view of our minimum uh, elder and full salaries. Um, that's somewhere in the lower 40, uh, somewhere around $43,000. And uh, so I broke it up saying, okay, if uh, 43,500 is about the minimum, this was a good cut point in our data. Um, so that was about a good minimum for a, a full-time elder. Cut that in half, 21,750. Um, 
uh, would be about the cut point for a, a half time pastor and then 10,800 um, for a quarter time pastor. And so what happens is if you look at that um, pie chart on the left, that's again, the number of churches, um, it looks like 31.9% of our churches are paying enough money to cover the minimum of uh, elder in full. Okay. And then on the right, you know, that's membership again. Looking at that, how we'd interpret that is we'd say 66.4% of our membership are attending churches that can um, that pay uh, the pastor salary enough for a full-time pastor. So really, when I look at these two graphs together, in my mind, it looks like a third of our churches can pay for a full-time pastor, and two-thirds of our members are attending those same churches. And then my final um, slide, really I just wanted to capture some, some interesting values from this year. Of the 446 churches in our conference, 50% receive rent as part of their income. And you can sort of think of that in two different ways. Uh, the cynic might say, you know, 50% of our churches need rent to make their end, you know, to make ends meet. Um, but the more optimist might say, 50% uh, of our churches already are um, ingrained in their communities that other groups feel comfortable using our church buildings. Um, already we're building relationships with our neighbors. So you can sort of think of it that way. 65% uh, of our churches reported some sort of community outreach ministry. Um, I really would have expected that to be closer to 100%. And I'm hoping um, that's just being underreported and that next year, um, we'll see more attention to that and be able to report a higher number amongst our churches. 66% uh, um, report some sort of small group. <clears throat> and again, if we're concerned about declining membership, uh, a good way to uh, build community, to invite people to our churches are with small groups. And I would hope that those um, uh, this number would increase next year also to beyond just two thirds of our churches. And then finally, 74% of our churches are reporting Christian formation groups, and that includes Sunday schools. So the other 26% are reporting that they have no Christian formation um, happening at their church. And definitely that's something that I'm hoping will change in the upcoming years. All right. So uh, finally, this is my email address at the bottom of the page if you have any questions or if you have um, want to know anything else about uh, statistics or the Wisconsin Annual Conference. I love talking about both. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be there this year, and I hope to return next year in person. And thank you very much for your attention today. I'm hoping that you have a blessed and productive annual conference. Have a good day.